come on down to the Monongahela River right here in the city of Monongahela, my hometown, where we're going to be rocking on the Mon, and we're going to show you amazing things right here at the Aquatorium and other things right here in Monongahela. So stay tuned. Hello, I'm Senator Cameron Bartolotta and welcome to Focus on the 46 and I am so excited that we are here today in my little hometown of Monongahela and we're going to share with you the jewel of Monongahela and really what has given it its heartbeat back. And I have the experts here to share with us. We are standing right here on the stage of the Aquatorium. Weird word, but we're going to explain all of that in just a couple of seconds. But it has really given all new life to our home little hometown. Monongahela. So I have with me today Claudia Williams, Terry Seven, and these are the experts here about the uh, Monongahela Aquatorium. We're going to learn all about it. So tell us a little bit here, how old is the Aquatorium and how did it start? The Aquatorium was built in 1969, most, mostly through volunteer efforts um, for the Bicentennial. It was the first venue of this nature in the country. and. The idea, I just found this out in preparing for this filming, but the, the whole idea was conceived on March 4th. The city government wanted nothing to do with it because they would not put out any money. Uh -huh. um, but Frank Ari, one of our local contractors, conceived the idea, uh, discussed it with local people. They started on May 8th. Hmm. And the project was completed in five weeks. Oh my gosh. They moved over 7,000 cubic Did feet of, of stone and gravel and sand. You could tell it wasn't a government project. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was getting to that. <laughs> okay. And the whole project was completed for $80,000. Oh my gosh. That's phenomenal. The restoration of just a portion of this has cost over half a million and taken eight years. <laughs> They did it in five weeks. Oh my gosh, wow. And the, the, uh, the employees worked five days a week on the clock and they came and they worked their weekends for nothing. They volunteered. Anybody who had a truck or a piece of equipment came and worked wow. because they wanted it to happen. Yep. And it did and it was a phenomenal event. But then it started falling into a lot of disrepair over the years. Um, I remember, I mean, I've been here for, for 30 years. It'll be 30 years in July. Um, but I, I remember all of the bleachers. They were wooden, and they were just disintegrating and, and splintered, splintered and, and really just a mess. Um, and and it, just, it just fell into a lot of disrepair. So, so help me, help our, our viewers understand what happened to turn that around. What, what started? Well, a couple events got rained out. And, you know, you can't control Mother Nature. It's going to rain, so you just deal with it, move on. And somehow people couldn't do that. Graduations, we had six years of graduations here that I know of, and then all of a sudden it was, well, what if it rains? They're going to get wet. Uh, we had wrestling matches here. We had a lot of events that went on in the time that this was in operation. Um, but the city government was not going to maintain it. Um, volunteers got a little old, they died off, people lost interest, so mm -hmm. it just kind of deteriorated. Mm -hmm. so, so what revitalized <coughs> it? When did that start? That started in 2007, and I actually have to say that was Mayor Kepik's idea. Mm -hmm. um, this is a favorite spot of his, and he every year has a fishing derby for the kids, which is a wonderful event. We just had one yeah, recently. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. They had 100 children here. Um, everybody had a blast. Great trophies. Yes. The kids get into yes. it. Right. The yeah. Sportsman's um, Club, actually. The Valley right. and Sportsman's Club works with mm -hmm. him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said he'd like to fix this up. And I was all over that because I was already thinking about our 250th celebration. Mm -hmm. And what's that called again? Do you remember? The sesquicentennial. Don't say that too, too fast. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to learn that word. Right. <laughs> um, so we started looking for money. Uh -huh. And the obvious place was the LSA grants. Right. Which is the local w share account. That's correct. Yes. yes. Um, we were awarded three LSA grants. Uh, we went for a boating infrastructure grant, which mm -hmm. put in our boat docks a huge asset. Yeah. 
Um, and that's that's ADA compliant. That's handicapped accessible. It is going to be. It will yes. be eventually. Yes. Yeah, because that's the the grant that they just got recently was to to add on that's to that. That's correct. And make it because we have so many disabled veterans in our area. Absolutely. Right. And it's just going to be a huge asset for them to to be able to come down here, just hop right onto the dock and get right into a kayak or a canoe or a boat. Oh, speaking of kayak. Oh yes. my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's another whole can of worms. Uh -oh. You do not know how many people contact me oh, to that's open. Right. A rental business here. Yes. Kayak, Tons. canoe, uh, paddle boats. Uh, yes, oh, right absolutely. Up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I see that coming in the near future. Very, very Th near this future. This is an amazing place to do okay. that. Our right. river pool in mm -hmm. this area is so peaceful mm -hmm. and so entertaining. It's just, mm -hmm. we need that. Yeah. So I see that coming. Well, and again, you know, like I was or I was alluding to in the beginning, in the opening, um, this venue right here, because it's the only kind anywhere, um, it has it has been a draw for literally tens of thousands of visitors mm -hmm. right here to Monongahela. It used to only be for the Fourth of July celebrations, because um, they would shoot the the fireworks off across the hill. Um, but they would have bands and they have all kinds of great things, and the place would be packed with thousands and thousands of people. But recently you guys have started an initiative to bring more people in on the weekends so tell me about the the uh aquator what is it the aquatorium innovation innovations right we formed a nonprofit corporation uh -huh. to promote and provide um low-cost family entertainment here mm -hmm. and we work together with an amazing crew of volunteers that show up every week and give up their time to make this successful we're an all-volunteer we, organization. We are an all-volunteer organization, mm -hmm. that's right. But what you guys accomplish with that all-volunteer organization is amazing. How many concerts have you put on here at the Aquatorium since, when did you start that, 2013? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so how many, and every weekend during the summer, and you have some big names here. Give me some of the names that we have come in. Well, <laughs> we've had some national acts in uh -huh. here, but I think more recently we've done a lot of I would say regional acts okay. and uh, tribute bands, which right. seem to be very popular. We've had one called Seven Bridges, which mm -hmm. is the Eagles tribute, and that was very popular last year. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring them back again this year. Mm -hmm. We have a Rolling Stones tribute coming this year as well called Satisfaction. Wow. Um, we've got a Motown group that we're really excited about because there are male and female leads within it, So, and they're coming out of... New York. New York. Wow. Um, thank you. Um, Let me go back and, and say something about that Satisfaction Band. Sure. Uh -huh. They're from Texas. They called us. Mm -hmm. See? They called us. The word's out. Yeah. There we I, go. I have to say, I probably got 130 phone calls this year. Oh, my god! From people that want to play here. See? I'm sorry. They I didn't mean it. to interrupt, I but know, I, but I had to throw that perfect. in. That's perfect. Exactly. And you were just telling me a little while ago that the Facebook page that they have, you got a friend of them on Facebook or mm -hmm. like them on Facebook. Absolutely. How many, how many followers do you have now on your Facebook? We're approaching 7,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're from all over the country. That's correct. All over the country. I've taken a look at that. Correct. I'll tell you what, this, this just a little bit of, of time and love and effort from volunteers has changed the heartbeat in this town in a short amount of time. It's so it's tremendous pride. what you do. It is. It is. It's hometown pride. And people love to spend time in a little town and just, you know, walk up and down Main Street and shop and eat. And, um, and, and we're... Like you said, you know, not only the recreation that people are looking for here on the river, but they're also looking for places to stay. People want to come in from out of town. Even if maybe they lived here before and grown up here, they're like, I got to get back to Monongahela. So they're looking for some little, you know, small micro hotels and things like that. It's you guys are the tip of the iceberg and you, you have lit the fuse here for all kinds of amazing things that can happen right here. So uh, we're, we're going to take a look around. We're, you're going to show us some, some different things that are available here, some, some new amenities that came in um, uh, with the help of some grants and some funding. So stick around. We're going to take a tour. This is quite a view from right up here at the top of the steps here at the Aquatorium. We can see the entire river. Um, it's quite a view. And this is the gigantic stage that gets filled every single time you have a concert. And you have something new. First time, first time ever this year, you're going to have what down here? Yes, we do. We have the Rockin' Italian Fest. <laughs> there you go. First annual. Friday night, we'll have the Hubcaps Band. Saturday night, Johnny Angel and the Halos. It's a free show, a free event. We'll have lots of Italian food. Mm -hmm. And um, 
probably thousands you know, and thousands of people. We will be have thousands for that. of people, but you know, I have to mention that right now it's raining as we're filming. Mm -hmm. And we're continuing to do this, just like we do for our shows. Right. The show must go on. That's right. Rain or shine. That's right. The show goes on rain or shine. Exactly. Okay, we're over here, and uh, when you come down here to the Aquatorium, they always have this great billboard up, and you can see all of the great groups in the entertainment that's coming for the entire concert series for the whole summer. We were talking about uh, uh, the, uh, the Rolling Stones cover band right up here. We've got that, and then uh, tell us about Joe Grishecki. You were just saying that he was inducted recently. Joe, Grish Joe Grishecki was inducted in the Pittsburgh Hall of Fame um, very recently, the Music Hall of Fame. But Joe has a story in that Joe went to California University of Pennsylvania. I believe he was there around 1970, and he actually sent us a poster from the time when oh. he played here when he was in college. It was a different band at the time, but. For people that are, are native Pittsburghers, Joe's been around since the 70s and has continued his career while being a He's a Pittsburgh icon. Teacher. Oh, yeah, icon. yeah. But the Clarks, the, these are local guys. They absolutely um, are. We know, a lot of tribute bands and stuff. They're so, so much fun. But also, uh, you know, we've got the uh, Dancing Queen, you know, uh, uh, we've got this, the, the soul that you were talking about. Also, this Doc Dogs. This was your very, very first event for this concert Correct. series. For this People year. had so much fun. That is a nationally known group that comes around and they have, they, they build this huge pool and they have all these jump, the, what do they call the dogs that jump? It's or, a dog the, distance jumping competition. Like it's I said, like it's, it, it's worldwide. It's wow. It wow. is worldwide, yes. Pretty neat to have them come down here in our, our little Monongahela. Um, and they were very excited to be here. Really? Oh, I They want to come back. Ah, they loved the I know, venue. Right on the river. They absolutely loved it. How many people it. did you have at that, do you, do you think? Uh, they had over 200 people registered for two days. Oh, my gosh. The dogs. The dogs. The dogs. Just dogs. Yes. And that's not the people who came to watch. No. Right. That's that, phenomenal. Those are the dogs that See, were registered to it just jump. keeps bringing more and more and more folks. And just last year, I think it was, that we they just renovated the whole sidewalk and everything. Here. The upper but, level, yes, was done last year. And all the light posts are all new. Um, you know, it's really convenient too because they have a lot of different vendors come in for different sorts of events. They have like antique shows and, and things like that. Um, we do. Yeah, but it makes it very, very convenient for any kind of a vendor show to come in because each one of these light posts, someone can plug in. Uh, you know, there's electrical, uh, pa there's power plenty available. Of, plenty of yeah. electrical service available. Yeah, and lots of room, you know, a nice fence to keep the crowd safe from the train tracks. This is all new, just within the last couple of years. It's perfect for a private street fair. I oh mean, my gosh, had yeah. Tents up and down, um, food vendors, crop vendors, mm -hmm. as you said. Um, we have a wedding booked. Correct. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That is fantastic. So it's All even right. a great venue for a wedding. And the yeah. venue is available for nonprofits to use for a, a very nominal fee. Yeah. Um, we'd like to see the, the venue used more than it is currently, actually. Well, and they can take it a look on, nice. on your Facebook page. And on our website. And on the website. We're going to put that out there. So you know, take a look at the concert series. Take a look at all the upcoming events and stuff. But we're going to show you a brand new building that was recently um, erected not too long ago. And it, it's changed all the facilities for down here and mm -hmm. it's it's really modernized a lot so we'll take a look at that this is the newest um, addition to the aquatorium venue um, this is a building that was uh, um, actually the funding came from another LSA grant the local share account grant but it's Combined there's a meeting with room DCNR DCNR mm -hmm. yes um, and a lot of hard work from the folks that uh, really wanted to do something great for this area. But there are beautiful bathroom facilities. There's a huge meeting room right in here. Um, and then there's uh, a place for concessions. It's a huge kitchen. Mm -hmm. And we have barbecue down here, a, a group of folks. What's the, what's the name of that? Hogfather's Barbecue. It's Hogfather's. Okay, come on, comes down here and you can buy lunch. Uh, but it's it's used all the time. It's really fantastic. One of the things that was, I think, one of the first things they used the meeting room for was uh, Stroll, Shop, and Sip. Another great, fun, uh, entertaining experience put on by the entire community, the whole Main Street. And tell me a little bit about Stroll, Shop, and Sip. That is sponsored by the Historical Society as a fundraiser to keep their museum open. Mm -hmm. And they do it the first Saturday in May every year. Uh, you buy a, do a ticket for a minimal amount and you visit all of the participating businesses. Mm -hmm. Everybody gives you something. At the end of the day, there's drawings and Chinese auction right here. Mm -hmm. We had over 700 women 
and 43 participating businesses come through town on a Saturday. Yep. So it's, and it's a lot of it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It a lot yes, of fun. it is. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And all of the different, you know, the restaurants and the bars and all the boutiques, all the storefronts have something going on that day. And it's called Stroll, Shop, and Sip because typically in all these little places, they have their specialty little drink, you know, so they give you a little drink as you go down. But it's a lot of fun. And it's almost like a scavenger hunt because they'll get a, a, a sheet and you have mm -hmm. to get stamps or stickers or something from all of the businesses you visit. So it's a tremendous way to get you know, business flowing through Main Street. And everybody loves to do it. Everybody's talking about it and the group gets larger and larger and larger every year. So And all just, of the businesses actually have yeah. something to provide to the patrons that yeah. come through. You and get a little something everywhere you go as well as getting your card checked up. Right, exactly. You know, and it's it doesn't cost a lot. No. So these are really brilliant ideas that have, have come about through the Historical Society, like you said, Chamber of Commerce, a lot of other groups that just really care about their community. And they think of great ways to bring other people in, other visitors to come in and bolster the economy. So it's, it's a win-win for everybody. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the, um, uh, the Mon River uh, project, or the Mon River, the group that uh, helps with the 13 different river communities. River towns? River towns, thank you. Yes, my okay. river towns. <laughs> You're helping me out. Okay, so that, that's something that uh, coincides with the initiative too. It does. They're working yeah. very hard to promote all of the communities along the river and they help uh, promote our events as well. Um, mm -hmm. They're a great organization. They work mm -hmm. with everybody and mm -hmm. They keep things rolling. Yeah, but it's it's really great for these particular river towns along the Monongahela River because a lot of these communities used to be our coal and our steel plants. And I mean, these communities used to have 30,000 residents mm -hmm. in their towns. And now we're like, what, 4,700 or so here yes. in Monongahela. Yes. So we need to do something to stimulate the economy, to bring more visitors in, and get other people that might want to bring their families in and, and move here. Well, and visibility is an issue as well. I'm not a native of Monongahela, mm -hmm. um, so people that I've talked to in the past, oh, the Mon Valley, what do they, th they think steel, and they think that the area is just unused at this mm -hmm. point. And I think it's important to let people know that, first of all, Monongahela was never an industrial hub, um, as you know, because mm -hmm. you live here. Mm -hmm. but, um, it's always been a bedroom community and therefore we really didn't suffer the same scenario as many of the other towns up and down the valley here but we, we definitely want to promote this whole area it's a great place to live and it's a great place to raise a family mm -hmm. and a great place to play yes speaking yeah, of tourism yes yes <laughs> we have to bring that up uh, Washington County tourism is a yes. great sponsor of ours and a great supporter um, they were instrumental in getting dock dogs here which was already one of our most successful events. But do you know that tourism uh, provides over 6,000 jobs in Washington County, mm -hmm. brings in over $750 million, and mm -hmm. contributes $150 million to state, federal, and local taxes? Right. People think tourism in Pennsylvania, or especially in Monongahela, is non-existent. Non -existent. Right. And it's not. It is very important. Exactly. The Dock Dogs event brought people from Florida. Kentucky, New Jersey, Ohio, uh, right mm -hmm. here to Monongahela. So how many of them stayed in your cute little peacock house? That's one of the blue peacock. I, it was full for the event. <laughs> okay, I'm bragging on you just a little bit because Thank Claudia you. has a, a beautiful rental home. It's, it's, a, it's a house, how many bedrooms? Four bedroom, two bath. Okay, uh, with a kitchen and everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's a little B&B, &B, you know, right here in Monongahela. Um, but uh, those are things that we need to think about to, uh, to move into the future. Um, and just keep expanding on this phenomenal idea. Our neighbor over there mm -hmm. with the industrial plant is trying to draw in a craft brewery. Yes. Which would work just just dovetail Perfectly. beautifully Fantastic. with our events here. Right, right. Melanie Patterson. Yes, she's, that's yes, correct. She's trying to, uh, to take that industrial area. And I know she's working really, really hard uh, to get that changed into something really cool. And we love that really idea. Cool. We're yeah. working right with her. Yes, that's great. There's that's no great. reason that this has to be seasonal. Very we can, true. We Good can extend point. this into almost 12 months. Exactly. Well, you know what we have when we've got the uh, Santa Claus coming to town mm -hmm. through Monongahela. That's I mean, right. That's, and I've, I've bragged about this a lot, too. But in Monongahela, if you really want to experience Norman Rockwell living, <laughs> uh, come to Monongahela at Christmas time and walk through the streets, come to light up night, Santa Claus goes through town and he goes into the pavilion in the middle of town at Chess Park and we light the tree. 
it's really a phenomenal experience. So there's a lot happening in Monongahela all year long. That's You're right. Absolutely right. We were just talking about all the different events. You know, it's not just seasonal. There's Christmas parades and the, you know, uh, Santa Claus coming to town. But you know what? There's so many other things we use this venue for. The Halloween parade. Um, you were mentioning ghost walks. That's another thing. You have to look it up. That's a teaser. Look it up. There's they a pooch do ghost, parade. A pooch parade. All sorts of really fun events all year long. But mm -hmm. you know what? I'm curious to know, what was it like in way back when, when it first started? What were some of the events that took place here? Well, I think I mentioned graduations. There were concerts. The Pittsburgh Symphony played here. But one of the big events that went on through most of the 80s was a regatta. We tied in a regatta weekend before or after the Pittsburgh regatta, and we would have the paddle wheel, stern wheelers, all come here after the Pittsburgh regatta. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. Um, we had hundreds of people and lots of events. The fire department used to have um, a fair here as a fundraiser. I remember that. Yes, and they're instrumental again in supporting our events, mm -hmm. our concerts, and everything that goes on. They clean the facility all the time. Wow, and mm -hmm. you know, so, speaking of the concerts, how, how big of a crowd do you typically get at some of these concerts every weekend during the summer? The, um, the average is 25 to 3,500 people. Yeah. yeah. The stadium itself yeah. seats. 3,700, 3, but oh. people bring lawn chairs and, and their own This entire seats area is jammed. Mm -hmm. And the Don't, stage. And the stage is the huge. Stage is when we have a dance band, the stage is oh. full and they're all out there dancing. Uh -huh. And they, they will not let the band stop. Right. <laughs> they just want to keep on dancing. And not to mention all the boats that pull up on the river and just hang out and listen to the band just right from their boat in the river. Right. We had one week we counted over 70 boats. Right. Oh my gosh, yes. that's fantastic. They, they, they it's actually beautiful to look at at night. And, and I think something else we, we forgot to mention, and I think it's important, is well, typically when these concerts start, it's, it's light out because they, oh, they're yeah. at 7.30 p.m. But as the night progresses, you see the darkness and the sunset. And we, we've seen some gorgeous sunsets here, mm -hmm. rainbows. We get a train occasionally, which we deal with. But, that is um, the ambiance. Yeah. You ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's been in use for such a very, very, very long time. And it's so nice to see that Monongahela is taking this incredible asset that we have, unlike any other anywhere, mm -hmm. and just using the heck out of it for the benefit of the entire town, the community, the, the state. Valley and the whole, the whole valley, and you had said, we're bringing people into these concerts from all over the country. All over the country. We are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mail tickets all over. It's fantastic. We That's take, fantastic. We take advanced ticket sales on our website and, mm -hmm. and yep. address them immediately, mm -hmm. don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> well, I can't recommend enough for every single person who's viewing here to get down here to Monongahela, go on their Facebook page, go on their website, check out all of the incredible events. If you really want to know what a wonderful, warm, small town feel is, this is the place to come for anything. But if you want to see an awesome concert right on the river and have a great evening with your whole family, this is the place to come to. So girls, I can't thank you enough thank for you. being here, for explaining things, for sharing this amazing story. And I hope to see every single one of you folks down here uh, in, the, in the 46th. And thanks for stopping by the Focus on the 46th.